What's going on everyone? Happy New Year. And because of the new year, what I'm going to be doing now is building a brand new custom desk PC. It's going to house both my home media server and my gaming rig so that I can both back up any videos or media that I want from my, any of my other devices to this same rig. And I can edit video, game, and record on it. So the whole system is going to be cooled by a custom water cooling loop. We're going to be cooling the GPU, CPU, and VRMs. So what we're going to be doing today is getting the motherboard prepped with all the components that are going to go into it so that once the desk is ready to accept them, we can just drop them in and everything is easy as possible. The only things that we're going to need as far as tools is a screwdriver with a few different bits, some thermal paste, and all the other stuff is going to be included in the boxes that you see behind me. First thing that we're going to need to do is take the motherboard out of its box and set it down on top of the box to use as kind of a mock test bench. So you've got your IO shield, set that aside for now. A couple different SATA cables. Wi-Fi antennas, a few different screws, instruction manual and drivers. We're going to set all that stuff aside and we're going to get to the motherboard. <clears throat> Personally, I like to store the anti-static bags with all the components that it came with so that if I ever need to go back and ship it anywhere for an RMA or anything like that, I always know where the, the packaging is for it in its original boxing. And we can remove it from. Oops. We are actually going to need scissors. So I lied. We're actually going to need scissors. Hold on for one second and I'll be right back. Now, what you're going to want to do is just snip the zip ties that are holding into its foam uh, shipping packaging. zip ties out. And we can remove it. And peel. That wasn't nearly as satisfying as I had hoped it was going to be. So we've set everything aside. Now what we need to do, because we're going to be using a monoblock that's going to water cool the CPU that's going to go here and the VRMs, we're going to need to remove all of these components. So we'll flip over from the other side. And we're going to need to fasten down the M.2 drive with one of the included screws. Didn't realize that wouldn't be fastened down already. if you have the right screw. OK. 
Okay, so we're going to flip the motherboard over. And these screws need to come out. Also going to need to remove this plastic Azrock sheathing that's going to be protecting and keeping these down as well. So we're going to flip it over, and there are some screws here, as you can see, that we're going to remove. So now we can flip the board back over. Remove the plastic sheathing. And also be very careful not to damage the RGB light header in there. So we can remove that as well. Perhaps not. Yeah, there we go. We'll set those aside. Let's remove the VRM heat sinks. They have their own thermal pads on there, and we're going to set this aside in case we ever want to reuse it in the future. We're also going to need to remove the CPU heat sink retentions, retention system. up set them aside on the back we're going to remove the back plate because we won't need it anymore the next step we're going to install the CPU just lift the retention arm take the CPU out of its box Now for this system, we're going to be using a Ryzen 7 2700X because we're going to not only be gaming on the system, but we're also going to be doing a little bit of light video editing. Take the CPU out of its clamshell. 
and be very careful not to damage any of the pins on the underside of the CPU. Now, all CPUs have to go into this socket in a very specific way, and in order to make sure that they go in in, this, in that correct orientation, there's a little gold triangle that you can use to orient the CPU, and there's also a triangle in this corner of the socket. So that means that they line up, you just drop the CPU in very carefully, and you don't want to use any force while you're doing this. And the reason that it wasn't going in is because I didn't have it lined up properly. As you can see now, it just dropped in. You can give it a little wiggle back and forth, slide the retention arm back down, and it's done. So we can set this aside for a moment, and we're going to unpack the water block. And we're going to be using a monoblock from EK Water Blocks for the ASRock X470 and the Ryzen 7. Comes with thermal pads, a new back plate, thermal paste, RGB lighting because everything is RGB now, and the monoblock. Okay, so we can take the monoblock and set it aside for now. Clean up the workbench a little bit. set the monoblock aside for a moment. The first thing that we're going to want to do is take the thermal pads and put them on the actual VRMs which are here so that they can actively be cooled. And the thermal pads are also going to have to be cut to fit. So we're going to measure a little bit and just drop them in. There's also going to be a protective film on either side of the thermal pad that's going to need to be removed. Okay, that's one. So before we go any further, we're going to clean up the desk a little bit just so that we can get some of this stuff out of our way and it's not crowding our space. Now included in this little baggie are a few self-adhesive washers. Now they're going to be installed over these standoffs so that they go between the motherboard and the metal so that it stops anything from being grounded. So we're going to install them now. One. Two. 
two. Wow, that was loud. Now included is EK ectotherm uh, thermal paste. So what we're going to be using this for, I'm not sure why I couldn't think of thermal paste. We also have one more sticker we're going to have to remove. So we're going to get this RGB cable out of the way. We're going to take a little bit of thermal paste and we're going to put it in the center of the CPU. We're going to remove all of the rest of these screws. I'm going to use the clamshell as a makeshift screw holder. Now, the way that this is oriented is to go on with the ASRock logo down. And just leave that there for now. Slowly lower it down, making sure that everything is where it needs to be. Okay, give it a good press. Now the tricky part is coming up because we're going to have to pick this whole setup up, flip it over without removing this, and install the back plate so that it actually retains this piece on the motherboard. The longer screws are actually going to be used for the backplate for the CPU. Make sure that's lined up. Right now we're just getting it started so that it gives us a chance to make sure that everything is lined up and then we're going to tighten them down in a diagonal. So first thing we're going to do is make everything finger tight so that it's flush and then we can start tightening everything down. Okay, then you can flip it over, drop your screwdriver, I'm going to pick the screwdriver back up. Now, this can be routed wherever you want if you're going to actually take advantage of the RGB, which I am. And we're going to take that and plug that into the AMD fan LED, which is this white LED header right here. And you're going to want to make sure, I'm not sure if you can pick it up on the camera, but there's a little arrow right here. That goes with the 12 volt indication on the actual motherboard. Take this wire and tuck it out of the way so that it doesn't look unsightly. Now the only thing left to do is... Next thing that we're going to be doing is installing the RAM. Now we're going to be using RAM that's actually right side up. Uh, we're going to be using Trident Z uh, RGB RAM. Uh, it's 3000 megahertz and it should go pretty nicely with the Ryzen 7 processor. So we're gonna get that out of the package right now. Set that aside. 
And you want to make sure that, actually, this one's already open. For installing RAM, we're going to be using all four of these RAM slots. So if you're not going to be using all four, you want to make sure that you consult with your motherboard's user manual to make sure that you're taking advantage of it the way that it's intended to be. We're going to open up all four of these slots. And then each stick, because we're going to be using all four, we can just go one, two, three, four. You want to make sure that this little notch is lined up with whichever spot the notch is on the motherboard so that it actually goes in. It will not go in if it's not. Whole thing. Line up, drop in. push down and there you have it all four sticks of ram which looks great and it's going to be rgb so we're going to be able to match it with the way that the monoblock is sunk the rgb on the actual motherboard and any other rgb that we have uh any other leds that we have anywhere else in the build so everything will be very nicely coordinated and we won't have to worry about any of that so there you go over the next couple weeks as i continue to build the whole setup I'll be posting more blog videos so you can follow the progress from today all the way to the finished product so you can see what I actually managed to create and if it's any good. Um, hopefully this was helpful for some of you so that you can see how to install a monoblock and that it's not as crazy as you may think it was. Um, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button and get subscribed so that you can follow the rest of the videos in the blog. Have a good one.